Metazoa Snapshot is a comprehensive org management solution to help maintain, manage, clean up, and optimize your Salesforce orgs. Visual workspaces with intuitive tools help to reduce complexity and simplify workflow. Just drag, drop, and connect. Optimize your org and lower the total cost of ownership by identifying which assets are used the least and cleaning up unused fields and metadata. Quickly restore metadata in disaster recovery situations by scheduling automated backups or taking snapshots on demand. Easily manage releases and migrate metadata and data between sandbox and production environments while automatically recording deployment history. Visualize profiles and permission sets with mass edit and user assignment capabilities. Compare differences in metadata between orgs and over time and set notifications to trigger alerts when changes occur. Detailed reporting makes it easy to compare user profiles and manage permission sets across multiple orgs. Reduce complexity with comprehensive org management from Metazoa Snapshot for Salesforce. We were just a bunch of nerdy kids who ignored the haters. We took their ridicule and we built on it. And when some of us gave up, well, we built on that too. Built resilience, built on a mission to make things a little better every day until the users came. Then the haters were VCs who scoffed at our audacity. This just isn't the way things are done. But we kept building. Users turned into teams, turned into companies, running their entire businesses on our apps. Then the software giants came after us. We weren't proven, we weren't fully featured, our radical cloud model wasn't secure. But we built on. And today, as companies adopt the cloud to move faster, teams are finding themselves slowed down by each other's efforts. The skeptics are claiming we'll never develop innovation at scale. But now, DevOps have come to the cloud, ushering in a new era of transformation. Companies can release on demand across hundreds of environments, innovating faster with fewer conflicts and fewer disruptions. There will always be challenges. There will always be naysayers and we'll build on. My name is Bill Appleton. I'm the CTO at Metazoa, and I'm a longtime enterprise software developer. I, I wrote the first App Exchange application, Dream Team, way back in the day, around 2005, and I've done a lot of work on the Salesforce platform. And, Today, we're going to talk about profiles and permission sets. And it's interesting because, you know, some of it's really new uh, permission set groups, but some of it's really old. Profiles go right back to the first days of Salesforce. And it's interesting how some of the oldest systems on the platform can also cause a lot of issues and be quite challenging. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Um, profiles in, oh, that's me. You can reach me on Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, profiles are really important. They control what users can see and do. So from an internal point of view, they control what users can do, but from an external point of view, they control the security infrastructure and surface of your Salesforce org. So. If your permissions are too open, your org isn't secure, but if your permissions are too closed, then users can't do the things that they need to do. So profiles are very important. And they started out simply enough. I mean, every user had a profile, that's all you could do. And over time, many, many additional permissions were added to profiles. And at last count, there's, you know, there's got to be at least a dozen of them. I've listed most of them over here on the screen, but everything from record type visibility, tab and application visibility, uh, object and field permissions, Apex cl classes and pages permissions. So it really has become a, a very kind of big monolithic entity that, that controls all of these permissions. And so there's, over time, there's, kind of uh, emerged some problems with profiles. And I wanna talk about that a bit. So they tend to have too many different types of permissions all bundled together. And then it's kind of an all or nothing assignment to a user. You can assign a user one profile, that's it. 
they get all those permissions or they don't or they get some other profile. Profiles can be huge in size and, and that's a big issue if you're doing metadata uh, retrieves of a profile. If say, say that you want to do uh, deployment from a source org to a destination org and you're trying to push profiles, you're trying to do compliance or security, something like that. And just, just for example, if you've got a thousand custom objects and 500 profiles and 500 fields per object, that's a quarter billion field permissions. And if every field permission tends to be about 250 bytes, that's um, 2.5 gigabytes of profile data. And that's just the field permissions. They're probably the worst part, but you know, it just shows you how gigantic and complex these documents can become. The other trouble with profiles is that they, they tend to be based on what's in the profile tends to be based on what users are complaining about in your org. So users will say, we, we need the permission to do this, or we need the permission to do that. And it gets added to the profile. And then a year, a couple years later, some other admin adds some more stuff. And over time, profiles tend to have too much, too many permissions for too many users. And it almost never goes the other direction. Users never come back and say, you know that profile that you gave me two years ago? I really don't need it anymore. Please remove that from my permission stack. And so because of this, uh, you can have security problems where things are too open and uh, um, so on and so forth. So uh, the other thing is uh, profiles really uh, kind of lack a top-down security design. They tend to be kind of a, a bottom-up, um, let's see, not sure if I'm on the camera or if I'm Rakesh is here. Um, and uh, so, uh, so let's talk, let's look, delve into some profiles here for a second. So this is kind of the normal situation where all these users have the same profile, but one user needs a different permission. So they tell their admin. And then one of two things tends to happen. So thing number one is that the admin just takes the current profile adds the new permission, duplicates it, and adds the new permission to it. And that's okay, but the problem is now you've got two profiles. As a matter of fact, this one user has their own special profile. And so uh, that's not good. And, and we talk to customers all the time that, you know, they, they tend to have way too many profiles. And, and so an interesting statistic to look at is how many users do you have versus how many profiles do you have? And if you start to get to where that, that um, you know, every user has their own profile, then that's way too many profiles. So this is how the problem started out. The other solution is just add the permission to the profile. And that works too, but now the problem is you've got all these other users also have that permission. And so your Salesforce org is tending to become open, more and more open to security threats or problems. And so, this is kind of the traditional dilemma with profiles. So what Salesforce did back in 2012 is they added something new called permission sets. And permission sets are good. They're like sparse mini profiles, but they don't have everything. They don't have the default application, the layout assignments, the default record type, the login hours, um, the IP addresses, some of these other things that are really just unique to the profile. And so permission sets aren't a general purpose replacement for profiles. And so, uh, so they're mainly good for exceptions. Like in the example I just showed you, you could give this one user a permission set and then he'd have that permission and that would solve that problem. Uh, but just recently here in spring 20, Salesforce released something new, which I'm really excited about. I think it's a great addition to the platform and it's permission set groups. And if you haven't played around with permission set groups, they are, um, they're really cool. And what they do is they bundle up a bunch of permission sets. So let's take a look at that. So first let's level set though, back to the beginning. So in the beginning, circa 2005, uh, every user had their base profile. And then they added permission sets about 2012, 2013, I think. And now every user has a profile, 
but then any number of permission sets. And so now with Spring 20, you've got permission set groups and permission set groups organize permission sets. And so here on my diagram, you can see this user has a permission set group. The permission set group is including two other permission sets. And so it's it, now permission sets with permission set groups are much more like a profile. So profiles were too big and monolithic. Permission sets were too small and atomistic. And now permission set groups are kind of filling the gap. And uh, Salesforce is talking about even having standard permission set groups, much like you have uh, standard profiles. And so that would be an even more kind of useful way to pe for people to get started with permission set groups. Um, all right, so here's, here's the most important point I'm trying to make though in this whole presentation, is that what you should be going for, in my opinion, is to, is to have clarity, context, and meaning in your Salesforce permission system. So, and here's just a really simple little example I've given you, where Bob has the marketing profile, and the, the marketing profile has been really simplified. Uh, any marketing person would get the marketing profile. You don't have seven marketing profiles. And I'm sure you, you've seen that in orgs where there's a bunch of very similar profiles that, that you need to kind of consolidate. So everyone in marketing has the marketing profile. But Bob's a little different. And he's also in the advertising group. And so he has the permission set group for advertising, which is kind of now like a mini profile. It's, you know, level two. And, you know, it, let's say that it has opportunity and campaigns or something like that. Um, but those are, the, those are access to those objects, objects that Bob needs. And then lastly, Bob does analytics for the advertising group. So he's been given a permission set to have access to Wave Analytics or Einstein or whatever it is. So what's important about this is that you can look at it and see that it's correct. So instead of all of those permissions being hidden inside the profile where they're hard to look at and hard to see what they do, now you have an explicit structure of permissions that make it very clear the context and the meaning of, of you know, Bob's um, of his permissions in the org. And so an admin could look at this and make changes. A security auditor could look at it and see by inspection pretty much that this was the correct permissions for this user. And so this is what's good about permission set groups. So how do we get there? So, um, you know, I think we've all seen orgs that are very complex. You can't just go in there and throw all the profiles away and start over. Uh, people are using the Salesforce org. Um, you might be able to start over from scratch and re-architect your permissions. That would be awesome. I know a lot of uh, admins I talk to cannot do that. And, you know, so, so one of the things I want to talk about next is how you can transition to the clarity, context, and meaning in your permissioning, which is what you really want. So one thing that's really important, I think, is the names. So you might use names that kind of key off of Salesforce objects, Salesforce permissions. Salesforce has their own nomenclature, and you could have your, your profiles and permission sets reflect that. Um, another thing you might do is you might have your own names, you know, based on the job descriptions and the security roles of your company. Uh, you might use, be using those names that are, that are better for your auditors and for your officers to review. Um, but however you do it, you need good names so that it really has meaning to the structure. And by the structure, I mean this structure right here. So, um, you know, the names are really important and the structure is really important. All right, so first kind of um, strategy to reduce the total number of profiles in your org and get rid of those similar profiles is to look for profiles that you think are very similar. 
and to analyze what they have in common and what's different. And then take the part of them that's common and reduce them back to the common permissions in that profile and then kick out permission sets to make up the difference. And so that looks like this. So we're gonna take these two profiles on the right and we're gonna combine them to their minimum and whatever's different, we're gonna kick out as permission sets over here on the left. So um, this, this and you might look at this diagram and say, wait a second now, this is actually simpler. This is actually more complex. It's not though, because here, all of the differences in those two profiles are hidden inside. It's embedded. It's not explicit. You can't see it until you really delve in there and figure out what's in there. Here, there are no, they both of these people have the same profile, like the marketing profile in our previous example, and the differences have been kicked out to be permission sets. So this is more explicit, it's more literal, there's less hidden stuff in here, so it's better. All right, let's talk about another example. So one of the problems with permission sets is you can get, you can end up with a lot of junction objects that connect all of these permission sets to the users that have them. So in this case, we have three permission sets that are all three of them connected to multiple users. Well, what's up with that? I mean, in other words, these three permission sets have something in common. There's something that's the same about them. They're being used together and they're being assigned to multiple users. So what you need to do is you need to capture what is in common about these guys and come up with a good name for it and make that a permission set group. And so now you can assign that to people. And so once again, you're adding structure and context and meaning to your org by you know, putting all these things together. And you know, you, you're also saving a lot of junction objects. So for example, in this case, you know, if you've got a thousand users and a thousand permission sets, that's a million junctions. Um, but in this case, it's only, um, a thousand permission sets. So you are, you know, or, and then twice that many junctions. So you are uh, saving um, a lot of complexity and, you know, simplifying your org and adding clarity and context and meaning to it. So it's not all good news. There's a couple of problems I want to talk about that I think are interesting. And especially if you're an admin and you're, you're cleaning up orgs with profiles and permission sets. One thing to be aware of is the sparse profile problem. And this is a problem that um, is built into its, well, it's either a feature or a bug that's built into the metadata API. So any tools that you use uh, that move profiles around will potentially have this problem if, if they're not ready to deal with it properly. And here it is. So the far left-hand column shows a source and these are the permissions in an org. Let's say that they're user permissions, you know, permission to manage all data, permission to, you know, manage app exchange applications, whatever the permissions are. Some of them are granted and some of them are not granted. So, you know, one person will have this permission and another person will not have this permission. And when you retrieve those permissions, those user permissions with the metadata API, go to the next column, the retrieve column, the permissions that were not granted will not be returned. It, the metadata API only returns the permissions that were granted. And the ones that were not are just not in there. And so then if you take that, pro, that profile, that metadata pro, uh, profile that was returned by the metadata API and you push it into a destination org, here's what will happen. The, the profiles that were, that were granted will be granted in the destination, but the profiles that were not retrieved will not be granted. And so this is the last column here on the result column. And you can see the profiles that were retrieved and that were granted will, will end up in the destination org, but the profiles that were not granted that need to be revoked, that were not retrieved, are not touched in the destination org. And so that's potentially very bad because essentially you've 
you've just pushed a profile into this destination org and you think that you're turning off uh, permissions for some people, but you're not, you're only turning permissions on. So you just need to be aware of that. Uh, and you need to watch out for it because it's just kind of an inherent problem in dealing with metadata. There's only five types that do this. It's layout assignments, object permissions, tab visibility, and user and custom permissions. They are the sparse metadata types that, that have this characteristic. And so you need to be able to, to watch out for that, especially if you're pushing into production and you're expecting some permissions to be revoked. Um, and, and the answer for it is to go into the source metadata and to add those permissions back in, into the XML as revoked permissions, and then they will, they will be revoked on the destination. Another problem I want to talk about. So if you think about it, in the old model, um, you had profiles and all of the stuff was in the profile. And, and over time, the profile just got more and more and more complex till, till there was so much stuff in there, it was really hard to deal with. And so in the new model, you've added clarity, context, and meaning to your org. You've simplified your profiles and you've got this great structure but there's now a boatload of assignments going on. Uh, the user, the, 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 every user points to a profile, but there's a junction object for permi between permission sets and users. There's a junction object between permission set groups and permission sets. And there's a junction object between permission set groups and users. So all of these junction objects out there suddenly become much more important. So if you think about this model, all the complexities inside the profile and in this model, a lot of the complexity just got moved to all of these junction objects. So you need to think about how you're going to deal with that. Um, if, you're, if your plan is to, you know, if you've got a, a thousand people in your org and you're redoing all of these links and you're doing it with the setup menu, uh, that could be very tedious and then, you know, error prone and quite difficult. So, um, so that's just the other thing I, I think that really is useful to think about. So. Um, uh, so with that, I did want to mention, uh, but maybe it's time to take some questions. I don't know if we can, um, are we set up to take questions, Q and A? Okay, so I, I see how to do the questions. So let me, let me go ahead and show you, before I do the questions, I will show you, um, my, uh, the, the free report we have on the App Exchange. Um, this is a, a, a really nifty free report. It's called the Profile and Permission Set Report. And it looks like this. Um, and here's Metazoa Woolly down here. And actually there's a whole bunch of reports in this, but select Profile and Permission Sets. And let me launch it. And the first thing that this is gonna do is it's going to request metadata from the org that you're logged into and get all of your profiles and all of your permission sets. And it has to actually get some other information as well. And then it's gonna put all of that together in a really easy to, easy to use report. And it looks like this. So over here on the left, you can see, you can see your, all of your profiles and then here are the profiles down the left and all of your cl Apex classes in this case across the top. Um, here's application visibility and you can see all of that information, um, object permissions and all of that stuff. Um, one uh, nifty feature we've got is you can, um, you can also look at all of this for your permission sets and you see the permission sets are much more sparse and object permissions. And lastly, you can look at your combined, um, combined security reports, and this will do a roll up of what's the profile permission that's granted, and then look at all of the permission sets that modify that, and then watch the actual security for a given user. Um, and oops, let me select some users here real quick from my demo org. So select a group of users, and now we can see their profile 
and then each one of their permission sets, how that permission set changes the ultimate permission, and then what's the final, what we call the combined security for that particular user. All right, so that's a free report on the App Exchange. I think that'll help you um, analyze your profiles and permission sets. Now we're going to do a little bit of answer a couple questions here. Um, so Eddie Campos asked, what's the best way to identify those security issues with profiles, especially if you're trying to clean up profiles to lessen the count? So I think that's a great, that's a great question. So actually that report I just showed you is a, um, I think a nice way to get started because you can see the combined security for each, any of these users that's in the report which is what their actual permissions are, and you'll get the breakdown of how they got there. You know, how did this guy in sales get access to um, delete accounts or, or to see marketing information? And, and you can see all of that in that report. And um, so that, that's a good, a good starting point. And, um, you know, I think, I think people spend a lot of time working on that. And, um, uh, you know, the start, the other starting point is just to try to reduce the total number of profiles. If you have, you know, if you have uh, three or four users per every profile, you have too many profiles for a big org. I mean, you have, you know, so you try to reduce the number of profiles and then you can really start to see uh, where the permissions lie. All right, let's ask another one. Um, Heiko Kramer asks, what is the best practice when it comes to integration users and profiles? One profile per integration or one zero right basic profile and permission sets? I think that's a great question. So one way you can play this is that you can reduce, you can have a zero profile, which is a profile that grants nobody any permissions. And then you just use permission sets for everything. And I'm actually, I think it's a matter of taste. If you want to do that, you can definitely do that. Um, I don't like it very much because you still have to have some things in profiles like layout assignments and login hours. And so you're kind of stuck with them and you might as well use them. I think the problem is when you have too many profiles. And so Actually, our snapshot tool has uh, a dialogue where you can select very similar profiles and it'll merge them and generate the permission sets that kind of like in the picture I showed in the presentation. So I think that's a, that's a useful strategy to try to narrow down the number of profiles and make them very basic. You can make them all go all the way to zero, but then you've, you've kind of traded one problem for another problem because now you've got, you've got to do it all with permission sets. So. I don't know. All right, another one. Mukesh Badi. What is the best process to move some of the profiles into permission sets and keep profiles generic? And my current client, there are lots of profiles used by multiple project teams and they mess them up. Yep. Um, I think, you know, that's kind of similar to what we were just talking about where uh, if you can see the commonality in those profiles and, you know, you, and you've seen it, it's like, you'll have marketing one, marketing two, marketing three, you know, what, what's up with that? So all of those marketing profiles probably should be one profile and then do more with permission sets and permission sets have a lot of advantages when it comes to deployments. You can put them in packages, uh, package vendors have permission sets. I mean, Permission sets are kind of the wave of the future, but from, from what I hear talking to the people I know at Salesforce, you know, profiles are around for, uh, for the foreseeable future as well. So um, good question though. Is there any sense behind binding a permission set to a specific license? Hmm. I'm not sure about that. Um, I think permission sets can be bound to a Salesforce license. I have to think about that. If I, if I come up with anything, I'll get back to you. Here's another one from Icelandic Gal. 
Are there strategies for managing the junction objects in the new world of permission set groups? Wow, what, what great questions. Um, yes, uh, well, I know in our snapshot product, we've built an entire interface where you can look at your profiles by user and then you can look at your users by profile and permission set and permission set groups. You can look at your permission set groups by permission sets and by user, and you can see all of those junction objects and, and edit them very quickly and report on them so that you get a big grid report on who's assigned what. And so that's our strategy. Um, you could, de I mean, all of those, the, here's another thing that's interesting. All of those junction objects are just data. They're not metadata. Um, and so, you know, you really need the ability to, you know, either with data loader or with something to be able to edit all of those uh, junction objects. But um, I think Icelandic Gal is, is onto something that the action is moving from the inside of the profile to this web of junction objects. And, you know, you, you need a strategy uh, because if you have a big org, I, I don't think the setup menu is going to cut it. Um, Nadia Gamesborg, any tools that you would recommend? Uh, well, I'll recommend our own tool. We, we put a lot of work over many years into profiles and permission sets. And we have five or six entirely different systems that are based on either deploying them or um, uh, doing reporting on them or finding problems with them or merging them or cleaning them up and so forth. So, um, but, but there's other great tools out there. Um, I'm maybe just not familiar with them. Let me, let me look on here. Oh, what is the exact name of the free report on the App Exchange? It's Profile and Permission Set Management. And if you just if you just search for Metazoa, you'll find all of our different apps. We have um, a number of uh, interesting free apps, and we have some paid apps. And all of it, though, is for admins to deal with some of these problems we've been talking about today. Um, you mentioned free report. Can we get this against our own org? Yes. Um, what's, what's cool about all of our apps, or in my opinion, <laughs> I'm the CTO, so luckily I like them, um, is that they're clients, they're desktop clients. So you don't have to install anything. You can just log into any Salesforce org and immediately go run the report. And so, you know, you know, sometimes for these, even for these little utilities, you've got to install a package and then it does, it only works on the one org. It doesn't work on the other orgs. So they're really easy to use and they're um, utterly secure because, uh, you know, it's talking from your desktop computer to your Salesforce account, we don't have a cloud. Uh, let's see what else. When you have an org. So here's one. Uh, let's see. Avitha Arukathi, uh, what is the disadvantage of having one profile for each integration? Um, I, I think the, the disadvantage is complexity. Uh, you, you end up with a lot of profiles and they're big and they're bulky and they tend to hide things that are not good. And so I think that's the disadvantage. And, it, and if, you're, if you're moving a lot, if you're moving things from sandbox to production or onto, you know, you're developing apps, whatever you're doing, if you're moving gigantic profiles, if you're trying to put gigantic profiles in GitHub, uh, it's, it's not pleasant. They're, they can be huge. And, you know, there's these giant pieces of XML. What are you supposed to do with them? They're hard to, they're hard to visualize. So um, that, I think that's my answer. Um, somebody asked, what is our tool? Our, our, the tool that um, my, my company sells is Snapshot Org Management. And it's a, it's a really comprehensive, uh, does deployments, does data migration, uh, has uh, 40 different reports like the one I just showed you. And um, so it's, it's kind of a, uh, handles a lot of issues for admins managing complex orgs. All right, um, any other questions? Do they just 
pop up here automatically? Let's see. So Kristen Cecil, this may not be exactly what you were talking about with sparse, but we have seen several times when a field level permission is changed from false false or false true in the XML to true true, and the update migrates correctly to the code branch in Git, but not in our environment, and wondering if you've seen this. So field permissions are not sparse. Field permissions are, you, you get all of your field permissions when you um, uh, retrieve a profile. Unfortunately, because they're gigantic in, in some cases, but um, so hmm, change from false, false or false, true to true, true. I don't know why that's happening. Um, yeah, good good luck with that. If I if I uh, if I can if I think of some reason why that might be happening, I'll reach back out. But I I've not heard that at customers. Okay, last question. Uh, Sean Kuruganti. Um, when you have an org in which most profiles are over permissioned and you need not only to break out the uncommon permissions into perm sets, but also do fact fiddling around which permissions should be revoked, where do you start? Are there some permissions that you suggest just removing to get started altogether from people other than admins? Yeah, so that's a that's a um, an interesting problem is to write an XML parser that looks for the minimum set of permissions in two different profiles. And um, you also have to be a little careful because, you know, you're looking at things that are true or false and which are replacing other things. And so um, I think that you could also just use that free report that I showed you though. I think you could see where a lot of things were the same or different and, you know, it shows you which profiles tend to be more similar or have the same type of permissions. So I think, I think that user permissions are a good place to start. They're very simple. Uh, they're just true or false. There's just one user permission for each one. Um, user permissions are also super important. Um, object permissions are another very basic one. Application permissions are another very basic one. So I think those are all good places to start. Um, the, the place you always end up finishing, though, is field permissions. And, you know, that, that can get rather tough because there's just, you know, potentially so many of them. It's the whole, you know, it's the number of profiles times the number of objects times the number of fields. And it, it can be, there can be just be a lot of them. So, all right. Well, thank you all so much for coming by for, to see my talk on profiles and permission sets. Um, Good luck out there uh, transitioning to permission set groups. And uh, we've really enjoyed uh, being a part of Virtual Dreaming um, out on the show floor. We've met a lot of you and it's, um, it's been a fun virtual show and a kind of a new experience, I guess, for a lot of us. So, all right, have a good night. Thank you very much.